Hello and welcome to Talking About Doctor Who with me, Dylan, on episode 2. We shall be covering The Impossible Astronaut and Day of the Moon. I have left them to do them once, it's they're two connected episodes, so I'll be reviewing them. The review will be mostly spoiler free, but then we'll be moving on to a little bit of talking about what I think may be happening in the series, and then any comments that have been posted on the previous episode, which is episode 1, which you can check out up here still if you want. But that is what the episode should be covering. So let's move straight into the review of The Impossible Astronaut and The Day of the Moon. The Impossible Astronaut starts with a bang. It proceeds with a fast and serious nature. Matt Smith is really into those Doctor shoes well now. And Karen Gillan puts on a fantastic performance in the opening's biggest moment. The episode looks beautiful. This episode of Doctor Who looks like it was shot for a movie. And wasn't even watching it in HD. Which it would look really godlike in. Arthur Darville is still fun as Rory and Alex Kingston is ever so playful as a mysterious river song. The Impossible Astronaut was a great episode to start with what looks like to be a fantastic series. The Day of the Moon takes it to another level though, still succeeding in every single aspect that the possible astronaut did, but taking it to another level. The opening 10 minutes is just as exciting as the opening 10 minutes of the possible astronaut, but in Day of the Moon the pace doesn't stop for one second. Shootouts and shoot, and so does scary, mysterious house scenes. River and the Doctor are really starting to get some chemistry happening, for better or worse. Day of the Moon is actually a scary episode, which is a good thing. This two-parter was a fantastic way to start Series 6. I couldn't be more excited for a TV show in history than Doctor Who at this moment. Hello, this is the part where we talk about my theories. Now, there's two episodes, and I think I'm going to have more theories in these two episodes than I will for the rest. And I've just, I deleted a few I wrote down that were a bit outlandish, but we're going to stick to a few I wrote down. Now, some of this isn't just theories, it's things I noticed. The difference between the older and younger do Doctor is noticeable. If you go back and look at them, you can actually tell that they're different. Not the first time watching it, but the second time, you can tell it's noticeable. So, not really a thing, just like, hey, cool. Nice little cool thing in it. Is the monster, the monsters, the Silence's TARDIS thing, the same one as a lodger? And I believe... It's not the same one, because it's got different colours on the consoles, but if you look at them, they are basically the shapes around the consoles are the exact same shapes with lines or whatever going through them, and then also the, the glowing beam thing is exactly the same. So that has to be connected somewhat, which is really weird, because who would have thought the Lodger, that episode from Series 5, could be connected anyway to this, because the Lodger just seemed to me, when we watched it back in Series 5, seemed like just an episode to, like, you know, just like a happy... Uh, a Chewy episode before the Pandora Open started, which m most series have a couple, you know, an episode or two, just, you know, just a bit of fun one. The FBI guy, can't remember his name, it's right now, Delaware or whatever it is, the older version of him, when, before the Doctor dies, says, I won't, no, after the Doctor dies, says, I won't be seeing you again, but you'll be seeing me again. He knows that they're going to be going back and meeting his younger self. So, I don't know if the doctor told him, and then, you know, he knows something more than them. He knew more than a lot of them. He knows more than he's letting on to, which is, yeah, I don't, I don't really know what his part is, but, and then he has, you know, he had a part in Day of the Moon, but I don't really see his character coming back. Maybe it does, but it just, it just seemed like an, that episode character, so to give his character a bit more of a bigger part seemed weird to me. The monster, the silence, tells Amy to tell the Doctor what he must know and what he mustn't know. The latter being that he is dead, assumably, but the, what's the other thing? That she's pregnant? And why did they know this? When they look at you, do they actually get your mind? Because the silence were able to find out the name of the woman and all that, know her name. And then there's also the thing about they're able to imprint thoughts in your mind. So they're weird, they're, they're not really scary creatures, but they're scary in the, the, the way that they work kind of thing. Why did the spaceman make himself unknown when only the Doctor and Amy were there? This is the, the, the cliffhanger ending, I suppose, to the possible astronaut episode. Who knocked out Delaware, or whatever the hell his name is, let's just call him Delaware, who knocked him out, and why did the spaceman choose to show itself to, I'm not saying it's the girl because I don't believe the girl is in control of it. So why did the spaceman suit? 
choose to show itself to only the Doctor and Amy. It seemed a bit weird to me, that. Um, what are they experimenting on? Now, this is the thing. If you look in the episode, you'll see that they've got, you know, like, Doctor-type things, you know, like, dissecting kind of things. Now, are they trying to grow... It's really weird theory, but are the science actually trying to grow... Uh... Time Lords, more or less, because... Obviously, as we've seen, we'll get to this a little later on, but uh, day of the moon, end of the episode, the little girl starts to regenerate. Now, uh, did she actually escape or did they let her escape the science and then took Amy? It's a bit weird. I don't really know what's going on, but are they experimenting? Are they trying to breed time wars? Because as we've seen River say in the possible astronaut at the start, ask the doctor dies, a cell of the doctor is uh, a time lord is a miracle, blah, 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 blah. So maybe that's what they're trying to do. Maybe, I don't... No, maybe the spacesuit is like a growing thing. They're just... I don't know. It's, it's a bit weird, but they it looks like that they were experimenting or someone was experimenting with something in there. The younger Doctor, the Doctor that we spent most of the day and moon with and the rest of the uh, Impossible Astronaut, but the younger Doctor does not trust River. You can tell that by the way he talks to her, the way he acts. He, says, he even says, I won't trust you. I trust you, Amy, though. But the older one, you can just tell. He doesn't really say anything, but you can just tell by watching him throughout that little time we get. He is quite happy with River. He was treating River as fine and dandy as Amy and Rory. So does the older one actually know who River is? That older Doctor... Does he know who River is at that point, but he just can't kind of let on to that kind of thing? So he's acting it out for an unknown reason. I believe he does know, and that's because... Look, you, you go through the thing. Number one person you trust, Doctor himself. Number two, River. Three, Amy and Rory. You'd think that, you know, his younger self, it probably would have been Amy and Rory, but for some reason this older trusts River more. So any theories I had throwing around my head about her being bad... Kind of went out the window. I don't think that she can really be bad. And even if she does do something bad uh, in the coming, maybe if, she, if she's the person that actually kills the Doctor, which I can't come to any conclusion that that is her, but she, you know, we, we know she kills a good man, that's why she's in prison. But I don't believe that she's actually a bad person because the Doctor, the older Doctor trusts her. And, you know, that's enough for me. Um, the little girl may be the baby, but I don't think so. The, uh, I think that was a just play on minds there where we see the, the picture of Amy holding a baby. Amy's pregnant, okay, and then we get to the little girl. So I think they're trying to trick us here. I don't actually think the little girl is the baby. I think the baby is maybe a little subplot going on here, but I think the little girl is just someone else. The little girl is... You could look at her as a little girl, but you can tell just by watching her, she is older than what she seems, which is really weird because you've never seen the doctor regenerate into like a child. Um, wouldn't for a long, it would be weird, wouldn't it? But, uh, like, the 12th regeneration, we've got, like, I don't know, Oswald Jones or someone. <laughs> River and the Doctor, their relationship seems to be going somewhere here. It's a bit out there, right? This is my, my one outlandish theory that I left in here. But could Amy be their child in the future? And be, they plant, for some reason, they plant Amy into that house. Because she is really weird. Why does she have that? Her house is weird. Everything about her life is really weird. So this is my outlandish theory that I don't have anything to back up with. But what if the Doctor and River have Amy, okay, plant her into the house, and then the younger Doctor is drawn to her because, for some reason, like that. That would be weird, but at the same time, it would be really cool. The little girl has the same regeneration stream thing going on that the doctor does. So they have to be connected in some way. And I'm not saying it's his child, I'm not saying it's anything like that. Maybe it's from the same line of Time Lords, I don't know. But they are connected in some way. Now, that's it. This has probably gone on for long enough. I told you this is probably the most amount of theories I'm going to have going on for. Because there was a lot to see in that first two opening episodes. There was a lot to see. But, you know, that's it. I knocked out a few outlandish ones and just left that one in there. But, you know, let's hope that was cool enough. And we'll be back for comments in a second.
comment corner. We don't really have any comments this week, but I really wanted to make this segment in case I start to get more comments on the Doctor Who videos to answer any things that said. That's why I'm not replying to any comments on the Doctor Who videos. It'll all be said in this, even if it's go fuck yourself. It'll be said. I am still trying to get used to Max Smith as the Doctor. I miss David Tennant. I miss Catherine Tate as well. The Night Revealed. Well, The Night Revealed. Interesting comment. You're still trying to get used to Matt Smith. Is it because of the younger thing? Is it because he's a bit younger? Is it because he's a bit more, uh, do, 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 you know, he's a bit more out there than Tennant ever was, I think. He's got a bit more of a out there personality. Tennant was always good. And the thing is, if the, the, the other thing you'll always see is that people who, I never watched the old series, and any, the thing I see the most is anyone that didn't watch the old series like myself gets attached, they mostly attach to Tennant. And Tennant was really good, but I love Matt Smith that for some reason. And Matt, Smith is, Matt Smith is slowly becoming my favourite Doctor, which is weird, you know, because I, I, I really loved him as a Doctor from my mother's home. But interesting, Catherine Tate was good as well, but uh, the Doctor Donna. Doctor Donna. Hate the new Doctor. There I said it, Ellie McCormick. Well, like I said before, I love Matt Smith. Comment corner over. I oh, thank you for watching this episode of Talking About Doctor Who with me, Dylan. Be sure to post some comments or video responses or inboxes for Comment Corner or about this, my theories and stuff. And we will be back next week. Thank you. See you later. <laughs>